So today I'm excited to talk to you about uh, some of the stuff we've been working on uh, with piezoelectric plastic. And uh, piezo uh, in the Greek means to squeeze, and piezoelectric plastic is basically plastic that you can squeeze on and get a voltage out of. And uh, we've figured out a new way of, of making piezoelectric plastic using a 3D printer. And today we're going to talk about some of these devices that we have printed, and these are little pieces of piezoelectric plastic, and it turns out that uh, we can modify their um, crystalline uh, morphology and their orientation uh, during the printing process so that when we're done printing them, you can push on them and get a voltage out of it. Uh, why would we be working on these uh, piezoelectric uh, plastics and 3D printing? Well. We think that if we can enable designers to design uh, freeform surfaces uh, using piezoelectric polymers, that'll really open up the design space. And since we can align the dipole inside of the material using a very strong electric field, uh, we think that we can actually help designers uh, design uh, new methods uh, versus strictly orthogonal, uh, you know, oriented uh, thin film sensors. Um, what are the applications? Well, there's thousands of applications for piezoelectric uh, sensors. It's a, it's a $5 billion market. If you do a patent search, you'll find patents from ultrasonic transducers to pyroelectric uh, thermal cameras, all using the piezoelectric effect because if it's a piezoelectric material, it's ferroelectric, and ferroelectric is also pyroelectric. All that means is that uh, if it's sensitive to being squeezed and you can get a voltage, that means if the temperature changes and causes it to shrink or grow, you should also be able to get a, a sensitive signal. Uh, what is the innovation? I think the innovation here for uh, what we've done is, is we took a look at how they currently manufacture piezoelectric plastic and we thought, well, <clears throat> how can we modify the additive manufacturing process to essentially capture some of the, the uh, fundamental mechanisms of aligning dipoles uh, during manufacture of this polymer and uh, use those to be able to enable people to 3D print and en enable them also to design and fabricate uh, near net shapes in a single step. Uh, I think the key results of this research are mainly the demonstration that it can be done uh, our sensors are about 30 times less sensitive than the existing thin film sensors, uh, but our current research suggests that we should be able to uh, increase our sensitivity significantly at the same time enabling people to uh, design near net shapes. Uh, with that said, I'd like to introduce uh, my uh, colleague and uh, one of my former students. Uh, from some of the work we did at the University of South Carolina, uh, Max Kirkpatrick, and he is going to show you um, just a demo that we've made, a little game uh, to demonstrate the piezoelectric polymer as a shock sensor and look at its uh, raw response. Okay, so I'm going to show uh, a brief demonstration of the piezoelectric uh, 3D printed material that Dr. Tarbutton has already explained to you guys. Um, so we have a couple samples of piezoelectric material. Um, this is an example of a printed sample, a circle with, uh, that's been covered with a silver epoxy material. So this is just like an electrode on the surface of the material. We have a couple leads connected, and then this is the same thing that we have on this circuit here. Now this circuit is designed so that it'll show us sort of a, a demonstration of what the maximum output is of the sensor as a function of the applied force. So right now it's acting as a shock sensor. When I hit this little sensor, this little bar over here will sh uh, light up to a certain number depending on how hard I hit it. So it's just like the uh, strongman games you'd see in a carnival. You take a hammer, hit the thing, the ball bounces up. If you hit it really hard, you get all the lights to show up. So that's what we're doing right here. So I'm just going to tap this very lightly. We can see a small response. So the harder I hit it, the more response we can get. So we get more response. So that's the general idea there. And then uh, the second demonstration I'm going to show you guys today is uh, just the raw output signal of the circuit. So we can look at the, um, just the amplitude of the signal produced by the material as a function of the applied force using an oscilloscope. Um, we have that set up right here. So um, we have a 
a thin film sample attached to the leads of his oscilloscope. And we have the oscilloscope set up in a single shot mode so we can capture um, one instance of a hit. So now I will run our oscilloscope. And it's ready to capture. And if I tap this with a hammer, we should get a response. And we can look at that response on the oscilloscope and quantify the level of uh, how much voltage was generated. In this case, we see a uh, voltage of about 20 volts peak to peak on the sample. My name is Max Kirkpatrick. I'm an undergraduate student at the University of South Carolina. Um, I've been working under Dr. Joshua Tarbun at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Um, and we'd like to thank you for watching this demonstration on the characterization of 3D printed piezoelectric materials.